Hello, I'm Amir, co-founder of Aggregate Intellect. Today, I'm here to tell you about how we help machine learning practitioners to develop unique expertise so that they become and stay competitive. Let's grab a piece of paper and write down all the cool projects that you worked on over the past little while. Those could be your side projects, the work you did for your corporate employer, or that cool startup idea that you were super stoked about. Now, let's do an honest assessment of how many of these projects impacted somebody's life, or at least helped you with your career progression. Let's take a closer look at the list. Now, cross out all the items that the pipeline was simple enough that a drag and drop AutoML kind of tool can easily handle it and there was no need for your level of expertise. How about cases where you spent a lot of time developing your model and then later realized that you or your extended team hadn't really thought about what was needed in terms of infrastructure or architecture for an end-to-end -end delivery of the outputs of your model. Now, cross out all the items where you were given data without enough context so that you can swear by the results that you are showing to your stakeholders. Did you sometimes end up using high capacity and complex models that were just based on your gut feeling rather than any sort of systematic assessment of what was needed to solve the user's problem? Looks like there are so many ways that things can go wrong and your projects can't realize their full potential. It's easy to think that it is the stakeholders, your co-workers, or your users that are holding you back. But maybe it is the time that you take control and make sure that everything you touch is a success. For the starter, let's see how you spend your time. The usually coded 80-20 rule for data science is at least very out of date, if not incorrect. In reality, I think you should have spent about 40 to 50 percent of your time on data handling, about 30 to 40 percent on modeling and deployment, and about 10 to 30 percent on making sure that you succeed by addressing all the problems, not just the modeling part. Allow me to elaborate. Unless you are part of a research and development team with tens of millions of dollars of budget, where you are supported by enough engineering and product staff, you can't really just focus on the modeling part if you want to drive any sort of impact. In my own experience as a hiring manager, knowledge of the end-to-end -end process on top of technical savviness is a sign of seniority and maturity. People like that have the ability to quickly understand the context they are working in. They understand that data products by nature are probabilistic, and continuous improvement is a big part of the game after the first deployment. They can identify and articulate in a reliable way what is good enough and how to get there. And finally, they use all the above to effectively communicate with their own team, stakeholders and users. As a former practitioner myself, I have designed aggregate intellect workshops to provide a comprehensive picture of how advanced machine learning techniques can be used in industrial product setting. First, how to use product development concepts, tools, and frameworks to identify and validate that the problem you're working on is the correct one. Then, how and when to use advanced machine learning techniques like natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and graph neural networks when solving users' problems. Lastly, how to make it all real using ML ops and engineering to give your models life and put them in the hands of users. What you're watching right now is the overview part of a video series that I have put together that covers three topics. First, in discovery section, we will talk about how you can identify the right problem to work on and create a narrative around it so that you can communicate it with everyone involved. Next, we talk about the importance of having a short-term solution to further validate that you're working on the right problem with the right solution. Finally, we will talk about the transition from the short-term solution to the long-term solution and the nuances and aspects that you have to take into account. This video series is primarily targeted at data scientists, machine learning engineers, and industry researchers. Those who want to build their product knowledge to be more effective team players and build products that people actually want to use. 
However, I think since most product owners and analytics managers don't go through any sort of formal training for running machine learning product teams, there could be good tips and ideas for them in the series as well. Thank you so much for watching this short video. Hopefully this has gotten you excited enough that you want to learn more about what I have to say. For that, head over to ai.science to learn more, to create a free account and to join our community. Now it's time to look at your list again. Which of those projects do you want to revive and build something great with it? Leave a comment on this video or send me an email and I would love to hear from you and have a conversation. Talk to you soon.